So Zoom is set up. So as I said, like we uh, arranged the schedule uh, schedule for the uh, rest of the topics. Uh, this week we'll finish SSI topics. So basically as Alexander picked uh, DITCOM, we decided to cover DITCOM this week. And uh, next week we will do uh, federated learning for one week uh, because uh, one student picked that, then we will have uh, data governance. Uh, and after that, we'll have decentralized finance. So uh, Marius will teach that. Um, and then in November, we are planning to uh, schedule uh, like presentations by students, by students, basically, maybe Marius told about that. Uh, so you you're gonna present your projects uh, like what you have done till that time so uh, mm -hmm. to other students and we'll have some discussions so so uh, for uh, for but I will share a detailed uh, schedule uh, in blackboard also in this GitLab so no worries uh, But there are some students who didn't uh, yet pick topics, I think. So uh, you're a new student, yeah? Or uh, you, you have been here? Yeah. I'm first time seeing, sorry. Uh, did you pick any, uh, pick any topic? Which one? What? Ah, yeah, you are the guy who picked the Federico. That's nice. So. So you, you are set up then, so we have topic on that. Then we have other students who aren't here. Who is left? I'm not sure, like data governance, I think. Let me check. Ah, oh, yeah, data governance uh, was picked by Lama. Uh, So she had a meeting with Marish today, so I think it's fine. And we will have a one week uh, arranged for this topic for data governance end of October, I think. Decentralized finance was picked by Dipesia. So uh, Marish will have one uh, one lecture or two on that. And uh, have you discussed uh, with Marish your topic? This week or last week? Last week, okay. Did, uh, so you have research questions or not yet? Uh -huh. ah, so it was a bit general discussion last week yet. Okay, so just set up a meeting with Marius. He's available and try to finalize and start because as I said, in November, you have, you have to present some. Uh, I'm not sure will, will it be graded but it, or it's for discussion just. So I cannot confirm it yet, but uh, but you will have presentation. Uh, so you should start and work on October. With Anushka and Alexander, we discussed last week and we have uh, research questions or some, but you can modify it and we will have this week also on, uh, on Thursday, uh, our meeting, so weekly meeting. Um, Yeah, so your the best thing you have you set up meeting with Marish yet? Um, Eric. Uh, who, who? Eric. Eric? Yeah, Eric. Sorry. <laughs> so here it says like best thing, federate learning. Yeah, I think two people. Two people. Yeah, they ah, that's nice then. Then we will have okay, okay. You are Eric. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So have you uh, discussed with Marish or yeah? Like yeah. yeah? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so you are you are on track. So we have two scenes, but I I I, I don't see your page on GitLab. So yeah, because I, I was tracking from um, GitLab. So yeah, you should then set up uh, a page. I think two people can do it in in federal learning possible, or you can set up a different one. And just put your research questions if you have already, and or at least the description. So students have done it. Uh, for Besnik, also uh, you have to do that. He isn't here, I think. Yeah. 
for DITCOM, Alexander, you also didn't put anything. Yeah. Anushka also, it's empty. So you have to uh, put. So Mm -hmm. Should I make a new page? Uh, uh, yeah, you, you have changed a bit there, topic focus. Yes, then uh, just edit it. I mean, you can edit your page mm -hmm. and uh, insert uh, your new topic or new focus. I mean, in SSI, it's still so you should just be fine. Uh, so, as I said, like uh, I will share uh, the, the topic schedule. Mm. But uh, uh, we haven't any lectures set up for uh, uh, serious games, uh, Benjamin. So uh, I, I will discuss with Marius. Maybe we'll invite some guest lectures uh, for one week because you have picked that topic. So uh, we might consider that uh, this week. So I will let you know uh, regarding that. So let me start. Then yeah, we should start, I think, uh, our topic today. I, I haven't made uh, any announcement uh, regarding this weekly class. Maybe that was a problem for you. I mean, mm. yeah, kind of. I mean, it, uh, it was uh, quite unexpected for you, maybe. But uh, consider it like that. So if uh, there is no announcement, there is a lecture, basically. So if, uh, if there is no lecture, we'll announce it. But otherwise, you'll have lecture every week. So be ready for that. Uh, specifically on Mondays, we will have lecture every Monday. For Thursdays, we'll make announcement like whether a lecture or not. And, and also, um, I will share the, the schedule so you have clear view. So for, for currently, I, I, I assume like it, was, it wasn't clear. Uh, and we'll finish SSI topics this week. So uh, next week, uh, we should start other topics. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sounds good, he says. Okay. Is it recording? Yeah, it's it's recording. Okay, nice. So secure decentralized communication protocols. Uh, But first, I want to discuss a bit about uh, like general architectural architecture. Basically, identity systems uh, don't manage uh, identities, but rather we can say they uh, they build to manage relationships. So, what relationship we have? Like, uh, it could be with other uh, people, or it could be also with your identifier uh, or your authentication keys. So, I mean, you ha you will have bindings uh, in this system, and these bindings define architectural type. Uh, I, will, I will make it clear. Um, one second. So uh, for what purpose we use identifiers basically? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, to establish uh, trust with others basically. Yeah? So we need some sort of identifiers so we can uh, uh, we can uh, have a relationship with others in our ecosystem, basically. It's used to yeah, identify yourself or like uh, to make some trust reliance. And, uh, and, uh, and also this controller like or a person uh, should have a binding with, it, with its authentication keys. So he or she can uh, make some authoritative statements uh, on uh, his ident or her identifier, basically. Uh, we have one architecture which is administrative. Uh, it's a traditional as a, what we uh, have in, uh, in our existing system. So the binding between public keys and identifier is defined by some sort of third party. So administrator, let's say. Uh, so he, uh, he owns and verifies your identifier basically. Uh, for example, uh, Facebook or like any, uh, any other identifiers was that we use. Uh, are actually owned by that uh, organizations, that administrators. Uh, but typically you have uh, your own binding with your keys basically. So they allow you to create your keys. So I mean, passwords, for example, uh, they don't uh, put, uh, give you passwords. Usually they, you have to create your own password. 
So you you will have some sort of binding with your keys and passwords, but uh, binding between your passwords and identifier is typically um, how to say in uh, controlled or administered by some other third party in existing systems. So we can say we have strong binding between controller and authentication mechanisms like passwords, but we do, we are uh, we have a bit weak uh, with our identifier a bit. So in um, in in a decentralized manner, we have uh, a different architecture. So here uh, we don't have any third party or administrator, but we have some sort of ledger, which is decentralized. Uh, and it's just used for registering uh, uh, the binding between identifier and public keys. So in this system, um, we have a we can say that we have strong binding between public key and identifier, and also a public key and controller. So basically, uh, we have uh, a strong binding in all this triangle uh, relationship. So uh, uh, as this uh, SSI layer uh, was, I think you have seen it before in uh, my lecture, we focused on this uh, layer three uh, before. So it's uh, basically how uh, to establish trust between each other uh, in this ecosystem between holder controllers that I discussed issue and verifier. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's worked by some sort of verifiable credentials basically. And we have discussed this, but uh, now we will focus on this layer. Uh, it's agent to agent protocol, or you can say wallet to wallet. Uh, so it's like peer to peer. How, uh, for example, we have wallets and agents and how we can uh, establish connections between each other, how we gonna communicate in a secure manner and so on. So we need some sort of protocol for that. So we, we will focus on this layer uh, today. Um, but let's uh, first clarify what's wallet, what is wallet and what is agent. So, Basically, they are used uh, interchangeably, but uh, uh, there are some difference. So basically, wallet is. Uh, so we have identity owners. Uh, basically, uh, it could be individuals, it could be some organization, or it, it could be any natural thing like a co, or some uh, some other things. Uh, so these entities will have their uh, keys. They will have uh, their Mm, and they they will have their wallets, which is for key management, and they 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 will also have some agents. So agents are basically uh, act on behalf of these users and uh, help to establish communication between others, uh, other uh, identity owners like here. So uh, and agents uh, could be cloud agents or edge agents. So agents. So it uh, it's quite. Uh, yeah, so as you can see from the, this picture, also, uh, as I said, like uh, key uh, wallets are mostly for uh, key management, some storage and so stuff. So you can store your DIDs, decentralized identifiers, key pairs, uh, some endpoints, link secrets and credentials there. Uh, and, and typically it could be on your mobile device or it could be also cloud-based uh, wallet basically. Uh, and tokens, but what is agent? Agent is like a software uh, model that uh, that acts on behalf of you and uses your cryptographic keys to communicate with other agents. Uh, and it, its functions are uh, quite a lot. So basically uh, agents will do, um, so it, it makes requests, it, it responds to, uh, to uh, requests from others and uh, it initiate connections between, I mean, and share your DIDs uh, and all, all, all the stuff happening uh, basically in terms of communication, uh, it's done by agents because uh, for example, um, your wallet might be offline basically. Uh, so you don't uh, have a connection always, but uh, your agent might be uh, more active if you, uh, Give it to other uh, like uh, software model. So it has its features. So you can't manage everything in your wallet. So uh, ag agent is like uh, uh, like agent is 
acts on behalf of your wallet, basically uh, behalf of you. But uh, but I will refer to uh, from this now. I can refer it to like agent. So you you may assume it uh, as it is. So uh, we we establish some sort of uh, DID exchange uh, relationship uh, between peers. Um, and when we uh, when we establish such connection, we exchange uh, DIDs and and public keys. So it's uh, quite typical to uh, I mean uh, similar to current uh, systems. Um, uh, but uh, for example, here, uh, what is DID peer? Like it's, uh, it means that for every connection, we should use different DIDs because if we use uh, same uh, DID, uh, like same, same identifier, uh, it will be trackable. So uh, in, in peer to peer relationship, we should uh, use uh, uh, different DIDs for every interaction. So we will avoid linking, link, linkage and uh, tracking by other third parties. Uh, but for this, uh, we use the DITCOM protocol, basically. So the goal of DITCOM uh, protocol is, as the name says, it's DID communication. So it sets up secure communication channel between agents and wallets, or between the use Alice and Bob, basically. So uh, one, one thing about the DITCOM protocol, like what, which differentiates it from other protocols, or like um, messaging protocols, let's say, that it doesn't rely on uh, key registries, identity providers, uh, certificate authorities, or any, any some sort of centralized assumptions, basically. So, uh, and also it has other features that I will discuss uh, in the coming slides. So you will see like uh, what is like um, use case for DITCOM, basically. Um, so in summary, it, uh, it uh, all interactions between wallets uh, will happen through DITCOM protocol, basically. So it, it's exchanging messages or like how to say, um, is a messaging system based on this relationship basically. And we could have like uh, some sort of, uh, this is like overview of what kind of interactions we have. We, uh, in internet, we, we have many interactions. So we can have, for example, um, uh, just a uh, peer-to-peer relationship with other uh, peers, or we can also have some sort of uh, relationship in terms of like uh, with some other corporations or organizations uh, which issue you credentials and, uh, and, and, and you present your proof to other, uh, uh, other organization and it validates your credentials through the ledger. So it all happens uh, in a decentralized manner. And for exchanging proofs, and presenting proofs, you can use DITCOM messaging protocol, basically. Uh, so it, it gives you a more secure way to exchange uh, credentials. Uh, yeah, and you can, um, you can send any data on um, DITCOM as a DITCOM message. But what is DITCOM message? I will talk about that here. So you can assume like DITCOM is a kind of secure network overlay. So, but... Uh, like it's like a TLS, maybe you know TLS, uh, uh, but TLS is very specific to a certain application, which is like HTTPS, but in, in, in case of DITCOM, it's quite universal. So it's a general purpose mes messaging application, we can say, yeah. Uh, and also it allows other protocols to write on top of it. So it's uh, more flexible. Uh, And also what is different uh, between, uh, for example, uh, in, uh, it's just typical example. So let's have, uh, we have a messaging uh, application like WhatsApp or Signal, but in that, those, in that applications, we cannot have, um, we cannot exchange messages between platforms. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, it's not possible uh, uh, based on how these systems are uh, set up, but you can exchange uh, messages with other peers. Um, so basically, unlike WhatsApp and Signal, uh, which can talk to each other, but uh, cannot talk between the two platforms, basically. But in DITCOM, uh, it's more interoperable. So let's say you have um, one wallet. This is Trinsic wallet. This is ID wallet. This is Lisi wallet. So they are actually existing wallets. Uh, they, can, uh, they can speak to each other. Uh, they should be able to speak to each other. So you, 
you you aren't dependent on one application or one wallet uh, or one uh, one system basically. So you are more flexible. Port you have a uh, you have portability. Like you are portable, so you can move your data between wallets easily, and uh, and also you can exchange messages between these wallets. Yeah, so that's uh, that's quite a big difference between them. Uh, here I, I summarize some of the properties of DITCOM. So it's uh, when was when it, it's a standard basically. DITCOM is a standard which isn't finalized yet, but it's on uh, development. So it's like maybe you will see applications on DITCOM in coming years, but it's currently in research stage. So basically, um, I'm just trying to introduce it in this stage, in early stage. So. So basically, uh, it was created uh, with the aim to make it more secure a connection between peers. So, uh, so because of that, of course, it's secure uh, by default. Uh, uh, one second. And yeah, and its security guarantees are independent of transport over which it flows. So uh, basically, uh, it uses public key cryptography. Uh, uh, to make it to establish uh, like a uh, secure connection between peers so it doesn't use, use these certificates from certificate authorities so it, it has its own uh, how to say established uh, mechanism uh, which guarantees you security and it's independent from transport as i said like for example transport layers uh, what transport we have https which establish secure connection but uh, didcom itself is secure uh, by default like messaging so it doesn't depend on uh, such transports, but you can use that transports like to send Gitcom messages. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, it's private, it says. Uh, by private, I think it means like uh, it uses yeah, end-to-end -end encryption, of course, and it lets sender be anonymous to recipient and third parties cannot learn. So that's uh, also quite a feature because in other messaging protocols that we have currently, uh, even though like WhatsApp says like uh, you cannot, uh, we don't track you. I mean, we cannot have access to your data between messages, but we aren't sure about that, to be honest, because uh, they might have some backup, for example, uh, to allow other uh, governments or like maybe themselves also for marketing. I mean, so it's because of its um, centralized architecture, we aren't sure about that, but uh, DITCOM was uh, uh, created to make it uh, like by default private. So uh, it, it, it has its guarantees interoperable so it isn't uh, dependent on a specific operating system or any blockchain or some vendor network hardware platform or, or ledger so any programming language so it's quite interoperable uh, and it's also tra transport agnostic uh, which means as i said before so you can send your ditcom messages uh, using any transport mechanism so https bluetooth nfc web sockets anything uh, currently, it has implementation on HTTPS, yeah, and it doesn't have it on Bluetooth, but uh, I think uh, I found uh, like one uh, uh, one seminar which says that they have a working group on Bluetooth, so you, you should check that. Uh, but as I said, like, is they don't have uh, yet implementations, but basically it's quite flexible and transport agnostic. Uh, uh, the next is... Uh, yeah extensible what does it mean extensible extensible means like you can write protocols on uh to be run on top of it so you, you can have different uh, things uh on top of it so i will i will explain extensible feature uh, in the coming slides so i will talk about it, about that more so let's skip it for now routable means uh well it's like a, it acts like an email so you send a message and uh and and uh, your peer can uh, send you back like after some time. So yeah, so it's a bit like uh, like email. So you can talk to Bob. Alice can talk to Bob without a direct connection to Bob. So and also it allows mixed and dynamic transport. So if you send, uh, for example, one, with one transport, he he or she can reply with other transport. So basically, it's asynchronous and it's simplex. For example, Alice agent sends um, a message over channel A, and uh, sometime later, for example, uh, she, she might uh, she may receive a response from Bob's agent over channel B. 
so it's like like yeah it's uh, like like email paradigm but yeah but it's uh, adapted as a messaging protocol so it's much easier to use it uh, because we cannot use uh, emails for everything but yeah but they are very really nice thing <coughs> so it uses that feature uh, but but one thing to note that uh, also it's asynchronous like email we can build uh, some protocols on top of bitcom which are synch synchronous basically so which is uh, which is this uh, extensive extensible feature comes here so it makes it more flexible not as like email which is only one application specific like narrowed but bitcom is quite universal flexible and general purpose um so I will talk about message types in Ditcom and we will have a break. Uh, so we have three message types in Ditcom. So um, if, uh, the first Ditcom um, like message type is a plain text message, which like as the name says, like it's in plain text form, not packaged into any protective envelope. <clears throat> and, um, but yeah, because of that, they lack confidentiality and integrity guarantees. And uh, they are repeatable, <coughs> repeatable. How to call it? <coughs> so uh, they are based on uh, JSON web messages, and mostly they are used just for uh, some sort of like testing, debugging, maybe or some other other applications which aren't which doesn't require high security level. So um, it's just the plain text. Uh, but we also have this signed message, as you can see from the picture. For example, you. Can, so you can assume Ditcom is a just an envelope, which uh, which is a wrapper of data, but which is standardized and uh, it has its uh, own features. So you can put any data here, for example. Uh, it's a plain text, and it, and it's a plain text message. You can send it like this, or you can put uh, one wrapper or one envelope, uh, which is like this one. Ditcom sign up message, which is a J JWM envelope that uh, that gives you uh, how to say not non repeatable signature basically so uh, and it wraps a plain text space basically so you will sign it and you can send it uh, does anyone yeah what is non repeatable maybe not someone knows Uh, not really. I mean, you can replace it with something. Uh, you cannot replace it. Um, if you replace it, it becomes invalid. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's it's uh, it's the second step. Like it's encrypted message, which allows that feature, like temporary evident, but uh, non-repeatable. It's yeah. Of course, as the name says, you will sign it with your digital signature, and it gives you a, a non. It makes it non-repeatable. So what is it? Um, any, maybe in Zoom? No, nothing. So it basically means like uh, after you send it, uh, you cannot deny that you haven't sent it. So it's it makes it like that. So uh, it 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 makes some assurance like that. So you uh, it's like a proof of delivery, something sort of. So because in uh, in real life, someone uh, for example gives you something, but after that. Uh, if you if you have if you don't have any proof of delivery, he can deny it. Like no, I didn't send you anything. Like after some time, so to avoid this thing, uh, it was implemented. Like uh, signature was implemented, uh, which is widely used now. Uh, so it makes it uh, non-repeatable. So it's it's by default it's included in Ditcom also. And the and the third message type is a third envelope. As you see, it's JWE, which is JSON Web Encryption. So it will encrypt your data. So it makes it. Uh, so it first it hides its content from all from us uh, all but authorized recipients. So it hides your content from others, and and only discloses and proves the sender to exactly only only those recipients. So, I mean, so it gives you integrity guarantees. Uh, and by integrity, it means it's temporary evidence. So basically. Uh, you are also uh, saying that nothing has changed, basically. So you have a guarantee that the uh, integrative message is guaranteed. So 
uh, not only you have sent it, you can also say like uh, nothing is changed um, until it reaches you, uh, recipient basically. So uh, th that's um, this message. And most of the applications probably will use this message. Uh, mm, so it will use this uh, last envelope. Uh, so it makes it more like, uh, yeah, more secure, tamper evident, uh, non-repeatable. Um, confid confidentiality is there is also like, so everything is set up. But you have flexibility by default. So uh, you can just ignore this and just or ignore this one. So everything is optional, I think. Yeah. So this signature is optional, basically. And one thing to note that this DITCOM messages use a standard format built on JSON web encryption. Uh, so it makes um, DITCOM message interoperable. So uh, everything is standardized, basically. So yeah. So developers can just follow this and uh, make their own implementation. Um, yeah, let's have a break, a little break, like 10 minutes, and we will go to other, the second half. We will still discuss DITCOM, but yeah. Well, let me just stop this recording for a little. So let's continue. Uh, we have discussed message types in Bitcoin. And so why you, you why uh, do we use Bitcoin? Uh, so um, yes, it just summarizes what I have talked in. Uh, in before, so it's security independent of transport. Uh, it, it's interoperable as it's standardized and also it's uh, due to its default features and uh, repeatable, repeatable by default, uh, but non repetition supported, yeah. Um, so it, it helps to exchange uh, like uh, communication, it, exchange uh, data between uh, owners, identity owners, and, and due to its structure, like general purpose, it makes uh, protocol development uh, becomes easier on top of it. And also it's mobile offline friendly. So I think it has, uh, if it's implemented correctly, it has uh, like wide range of use cases, basically. You can, uh, you can have different uh, applications on top of Bitcoin, basically. Yeah, transports we already discussed. So I wanted to discuss one implementation, which was Hyperledger Areas, which is an open source framework, uh, which is a collection of code bases. Uh, and one of them is uh, was Bitcoin. So it started uh, as part of Hyperledger Areas. Uh, the standard of DITCOM, standardization of DITCOM. Then it moved to a, a decentralized identity foundation, which is a nonprofit. So currently, it's a, it's a, it's a working group project. Uh, yeah, by which is a part of DIF. But Hyperledger Areas was initially start, and it's all, uh, still uh, one of the mostly used uh, frameworks in this space. Um, so Hyperledger is a blockchain, as you know. Uh, uh, blockchain platform, uh, which is uh, part of Linux Foundation, but Hyperledger Areas is specifically created for peer-to-peer -peer interactions uh, or like agent-to-agent -agent communication, as, as I said. Uh, and we have also Hyperledger Ursa, which is more like cryptography. Uh, we haven't covered it here, but it, I, you can just uh, know that it's uh, mostly for like what kind of cryptography is it use it in. Uh, it defines the cryptography behind this. Well, it's a bit different. Yeah. So uh, the, the overall picture is shown here. So we have, for example, uh, Hyperledger Ursa, which is uh, which defines some crypto, what kind of crypto we can use. And Aries defines the DITCOM protocol and uh, like agent-to-agent -agent communication. So we have a wallet, which is kind of secure data store. Uh, but... Uh, 
uh, DITCOM is like a communication between wallets and like agents. So it can have uh, verifiable credentials exchange is, uh, is done by DITCOM. Uh, key management, well, yeah, some part of might be done. Payment uh, is one application, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think we don't have to go through uh, Hyperjosa here. Uh, but basically, it implements some uh, some very good uh, cryptographic techniques like zero knowledge, knowledge proofs. So you can have uh, uh, like uh, very un un uh, how to say a connection which is very uh, reliable and the privacy preserving. So you don't have to share anything more. Well, we don't need this one. So yeah, let's talk about uh, extensible. Well, why DITCOM is extensible? So basically, uh, any uh, like any issues and like uh, presentation of credentials what, that we discussed in previous lectures are like basically protocols which are uh, which could be on top of uh, DITCOM. So uh, we talked about like uh, issuing credentials, presenting them as like separate thing, but Actually, they can be considered as a protocol, which is on top of Bitcoin, basically. So you just send uh, or exchange issue credentials, uh, uh, wrapping it to Bitcoin, like as a Bitcoin, which is one example, for example, yeah? But there are many other, other poss possible protocols, like you can delegate your uh, authority, for example, uh, uh, in current, like in existing system, delegation of authority are really lacking because, uh, Mm, digitally, it's kind of hard to do that. And in Norway, for example, even you, you usually have to fill, uh, fill this full marked form, like uh, um, proof of authority, how it's called, I don't know. So you need to fill that form and uh, delegator should sign it and you can have some sort of, you can act beha on behalf of that person, for example. You can pick up the medicine from, uh, these stores, uh, drug stores, uh, one, but digitally, I think it isn't possible. Like uh, you still have to show your ID and you need to bring the form maybe to take the prescriptions, for example, on behalf of your mother, for example, and so on. So, uh, but with Zitcom, it's uh, with this secure protocol, you can write applications which delegates uh, this authority. So basically you can uh, digitally do that. I'm not sure whether bank ID allows it currently, but I haven't seen it yet. But some sort of delegation is present, but they are very uh, siloed, so not you cannot use it uh, in other applications. So they are very application specific, but uh, commenting, buying and selling. So as I said, like you can send tokens uh, on this protocol. Uh, you can have some negotiation, uh, you can enforce some contracts, or you can also transfer ownership basically. Uh, so ownership of house or something, anything. Auditing, uh, reporting errors, also one possible way. Uh, I also wanted to show one uh, very good example, which was implemented basically, but uh, I didn't install any uh, like prerequisites. So there is like tic-tac-toe protocol, uh, which, is, which, which was created uh, as a fun. So basically you can play uh, this game with your peer uh, first, you need to establish a connection, and then uh, you can. Uh, let me show you first. Okay. So yeah, uh, so basically it was already here, so you can install it uh, and check it. Like so, this is the protocol, uh, which is part of Hyperledger areas. So someone implemented this protocol on top of Ditko. So basically it's a game. Uh, you can play uh, a game and send uh, like uh, what you will do. In, uh, so this one is without UI, I think. But uh, this Pico Lab implemented as a UI, uh, like it has its UI. So uh, it sends, for example, uh, you have Alice and you, you establish a connection and you, you can send them. Um, so it's here, it shows the connection. So it's Bitcoin connections. So first, you need to establish connection uh, and you can send messages or you can also play the game. So everything is happens on top of, uh, I mean, as a Bitcoin protocol uh, 
yeah, se sending messages and uh, everything is uh, happened in this way. But I don't have prerequisite for that, so I couldn't show it. But I think it's working. Uh, so. And one other way is uh, this uh, also in IoT. I, one one application could be what, which is quite interesting. So I want to discuss it in more detail. So in current model of IoT, for example, uh, let's say we we have this coffee grinder, and in order to establish connection with this coffee grinder in current system, you you need to establish uh, the application usually from the company that. Uh, that provide IoT service for this. So you, you establish, uh, you download application, mobile application. So you have uh, some HTTPS connection with this IoT service. And I mean, when you want to do something to, to him, uh, to this uh, thing, you need to always uh, uh, route for, uh, with this IoT service first. So you send a request to this, uh, to this IoT service and the IoT service uh, has a API connection with Coffee Grinder, which like, uh, yeah, routes it to coffee grinder. So it's implemented in uh, the current model of IoT uh, is like this. Um, so basically IoT service is like intermediates, intermediates between uh, Alice and her device. But uh, let's assume we, we have self-sovereign internet of things. Uh, we have Alice and she has many connections, uh, peer like peer-to-peer -peer connections, which is all like decentralized. And also she has a connection with her uh, coffee grinder, like her devices, let's say. Uh, let's isolate it. So we have this model, like uh, as, it, as it's shown here. So now Alice has a pure DID relationship with uh, coffee grinder. So she can exchange uh, messages uh, uh, with, with this thing uh, by itself. So no need for like intermediary. But for verification, you may use uh, like Paratsa, for example, uh, to, for example, one use case could, could be like firmware, firmware update. So Baratza uh, can, uh, can send firmware, uh, firmware update to Coffee Grinder, and <clears throat> the, the device can automatically, for example, validate the signature on the ledger, like it's, it's from the Baratza. So he, and he can accept it, for example, and uh, do Everything is automatic and everything is peer to peer. And also, uh, uh, and in case of Alice, for example, she can prove uh, like uh, this, let's say Coffee Grinder uh, provides some ownership credential to Alice and she can prove uh, her uh, ownership of this device to any other thing, not only Baratza here, but just to other um, organizations or anything. Uh, for example, in real life, you need to prove some sort of ownership of some device, for example. You can do it in that manner. So, yeah, so basically proving that, uh, proves that you own some device, not, not specific here, but yeah. And she can, Alice can prove to anyone that she owns that coffee grinder, basically. Uh, and yeah. And all these could be established with DITCOM messages. Uh, and uh, the relationships are autonomic. So no need for intermediaries. And it makes, I think, the system more, uh, more scalable and efficient. Uh, well, uh, at last, I want to discuss a bit about feature of DITCOM. So we have currently a uh, DITCOM version one, uh, which was born in hyperledger areas. But now uh, they are moving it, as I said, to, to like nonprofit organization for standardization, which is did conversion to. Uh, what is the difference? So, uh, yeah, so in the second version, they say like uh, zero RTT instead of did exchange. So, uh, does anyone know what is zero RTT? The zero RTT is like uh, what I uh, what I know is like a part of TLS. So it's just, uh, it's basically without any handshake you can uh, have a communication. So uh, actually, in the web uh, on the web you usually have to have a handshake procedure. Uh, so you establish a connection every time, 
and then you exchange data. So exchanging data is a second, uh, second part, second stage. But uh, recently, like it, in 2018, uh, TLS had an update and uh, it, it includes zero RTT, which means uh, zero uh, round trip handshake or something like that. So basically, uh, if you uh, if you have established connection before, uh, in your like in next uh, communication, you can just start from like data exchange basically. So you don't have to uh, establish connection every time, but if you establish connection first, uh, you can after that you can just exchange data in the second time. So uh, basically, it makes the system more efficient. So Bitcom also like uh, wants to implement similar pattern. So you don't have to establish connection every time, but if you have connection before, you can just uh, go to the next stage, so uh, exchanging the data. Uh, and other, uh, other uh, differences, what I uh, know is like, they want to make Ditcoin version two more like standardized. So they will follow the standards. The first one was basically uh, implemented as like more, uh, not everything uh, follows the standards. So they just wanted to prove the concept. Uh, Yeah, so as you said, in development with a broad community of implementers beyond just areas implementation. So uh, at first it was uh, more narrowed down to hyperledger areas, but now they want to do it more broadly so I, they can incorporate others. I have one uh, like uh, video lecture regarding that, so I can send you, so you can take a look on that specifically. Uh, and they want to implement offline support, support, uh, via Bluetooth or QR code, and and also uh, they, um, yeah, this one is they will rely on peer deep, like uh, for unknown crypt, unknown crypt. Like right? uh, initially they had some sort of other mechanism, but now they use peer deep for uh, like for making privacy preserving connections. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but WhatsApp is quite different than these protocols. So as I said, like, uh, Ditcom is more similar to TLS than, uh, rather than WhatsApp. WhatsApp is more like in the application layer. Uh, so, uh, but uh, in TLS before, you, you, you had to set up, for example, a connection every time. So I will have a homework for you. So to, because, I didn't have any comparison with existing standards here. So you will do that now. So I'll explain what you're gonna do because um, to understand Ditcom, you have to compare it with other existing uh, decentralized protocols, yeah? Or like WhatsApp, for example, to understand the difference, what is like. So uh, you will do that basically. <laughs> so I, I haven't done it. Uh, so my... <laughs> I forgot recording or it's set up. Hopefully I have done it right. No, it's okay. Because some students are missing. So I was uh, thinking like they will miss everything. So I will, I explain you what, uh, your homework for Thursday. So on Thursday, um, I'll stop sharing. And yeah. Yeah, so on Thursday, we'll have a short lecture, like discussion in, in, sort, uh, in sort of discussion. Uh, so I, will, I might have a short lecture on uh, secure data storage, so like 15, 20 minutes. Then we'll, you, uh, you have, we'll discuss like and compare uh, this secure decentralized protocols, basically. So the plan is to, uh, for example, the initial plan was that we have WhatsApp, for example, uh, Signal, uh, TLS, and Ditcom. Uh, it's what I have now. So we will do some comparison between these protocols. I mean, how they work basically. Uh, 
because they are quite different actually. WhatsApp and uh, TLS is different, Gitcom is different, but uh, they have one, uh, one thing in common, they exchange some messages or like data. So that's the common, but otherwise they are quite different. But still we can do that, I think, to get a like, uh, clear view and a clear distinction of Gitcom uh, and others. So uh, I divided you to, to, to four teams. Mm. And so Benjamin and Besnik will uh, research on WhatsApp uh, and the, uh, the properties. So uh, me too. So you, what you have to do? So you have to uh, draw architecture. Basically, uh, it's the first thing to do. How uh, how peer to peer uh, exchange happens? So you uh, you explore uh, using current sources on the internet. You, you should be fine. Uh, Second thing is uh, the properties. You will analyze the properties as I uh, have done with Bitcoin, but I haven't done much on Bitcoin yet for comparison. So, uh, so what kind of properties? For example, the privacy. How privacy is achieved in this uh, in these applications, messaging applications like WhatsApp, Signal, and TLS? Like also like how how that works uh, in so basically, it's a data privacy. Then uh, security. Like security includes like end-to-end uh, -end encryption, what kind of encryption they use, uh, what kind of signatures, and overall how it, uh, how it guarantees signature. Uh, so then we will have what we have storage. How they store the data in the cloud or, oh yeah, okay. So it's quite okay. And the routing. How the routing happens in these applications, okay? So uh, for example, when users exchange data, how basically the routing happens? Uh, so you need to, you will have like five to 10 minutes to present these findings. I will, I will send you this, no worries, in a clear way, no, it's not clear. <laughs> so uh, for example, you can use, uh, you can create some like two, two, three slides or you can draw it here in the black, uh, in the blackboard, okay? So you have five to 10 minutes uh, time to draw the architecture showing the, how users are uh, interact and how the messages are sent, <clears throat> and also the, the, uh, some discussion on properties. And if we have questions, we'll ask you. So I need to divide you to the teams. So that's, that's one kind of problem now. Um, so well, um, and we, I, I think we can include Bitcom here also, so to make it clear because some students are absent, so Bitcom should be here. And I, I, I didn't uh, include like, what kind of encryption used, uh, I missed some points. So I don't have clear exact uh, architecture. So DITCOM is Anushka and Alexander, you'll do as a team. <coughs> you'll present uh, five to 10 minutes about DITCOM. Uh, so basically summarize it and based on this profit, uh, on this plan. plan. Uh, signal, signal is for Eric and uh, Dipesh. Uh, you will do signal, so how, I heard that signal is kind of privacy preserving, but I don't know how it works. So <laughs> you should explore it. <clears throat> and we have WhatsApp, which has like, um, has a bad reputation in sort, of, in sort of that, but it's interesting like how it works, for example, and how encryption works there uh, <clears throat> and the routing and stuff. So Benjamin and Besnik is uh, responsible for WhatsApp. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will publish it. Uh, everything will be published in this um, as an announcement today, hopefully, Benjamin. 
So no worries. So uh, Benjamin and Besnik are responsible for WhatsApp and TLS uh, is, a, uh, is Lama. And do you know Himali is? Yeah, then TLS should be taken by someone. Mm. Uh, Lama will take TLS. <laughs> is there anyone other left? Like, who is also in this group? No worries, Lama, sh she can do it, I think. So TLS will be done by Lama. I will uh, email everything, so it should be clear. Uh, so, so it's not graded, but you should try to work on it. So you can, for example, uh, explore it yourself until Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday, you can have a meeting between the team members uh, and you can do that presentation, like how are you gonna present it, that's all. So it should be fine. Uh, on Thursday, we, we have class at 10.30 or something, yeah? 10, because we moved the, the time, it wasn't very yeah, can... yeah, so I, I, will, I will send the announcement. 10.15 or something like that, yeah. So I will make an announcement uh, explaining it. Uh, well. Any questions on the homework? So yeah, I think it's it's not it's it's okay. Just uh, one thing worrying is like uh, there is only one member in TLS group, but yeah, I, I think it should be fine. <coughs> so I will take a note and I will send it. Yeah. 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 Uh, well. Actually, when you establish a connection, you always had to, uh, you always need to have a connection first. So after that, you can send. So it basically it works like this. Uh, you establish a connection with your peer, and then you can send any message to, to her, uh, uh, to, to that person. And ideally, you don't have to have a handshake in the standard. But uh, in Git conversion one, they implemented it a bit different, you know? So it was based on, it was easier to implement for them with handshake, like, but they are in bit conversion too. They want to standardize it. I mean, follow the standard. Uh, they, so they will make it without handshake for second uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. but, but one thing to keep is uh, you still, uh, in any uh, sort of communication, you still need to first have a connection. So you establish connection then you, you can have like email, like asynchronous messages, yeah. So I, as you are right, so basically in standard, it, it was said like that, but in bit conversion one, they implemented a bit differently. So um, it was easier to prove. In terms of email, are we creating like email addresses like that? Uh, setting up connection is basically, uh, uh, you need to, uh, yeah, like, no, you have account, for example, mm -hmm. but you need to find uh, your peers public key and uh, some endpoint. So where you're gonna send uh, the message. So it could be email, it could be some website or like anything. So in Ditcom, there is a part end, endpoint, mm -hmm. which is kind of address. So like where you're gonna send the messages. So it could be different. So some sort of like this. Uh, yeah, QR code is one option to establish connection. 
So uh, Benjamin asking, when is the presentation? Presentation is on Thursday, 10-15. Uh, I think we have a lecture time. Uh, so it will be on that time. <coughs> so uh, on Thursday, we will have a one hour lecture, one hour class, basically. So I will have short lecture maybe. Then we will have your presentations and some discussion on comparing these protocols. So because it might be confusing uh, without comparison, basically. And for you, it's great because you can use what knowledge we have here in your uh, work. Thank you. And uh, maybe you can find other protocols like which are similar to DITCOM. So you can, yeah, so yeah, you look into that. Uh, but currently, I think it's fine to analyze this, what we have now. Uh, so, yeah. Any other questions uh, from you? So, so re as a, a reminder, uh, you have to start working uh, because October will be like a working, for you, uh, working time for you. And... Uh, in November, you you need to present your results, some sort of intermediate results. Mm, I'm not sure about grading, but I will ask my. I don't think it will be graded. It will be just like your what you have find, found found. Uh, you can present it in November, and uh, at the end of November, uh, I think you have, or in December, I don't remember, the date of the exam and this. Nine. 29. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's end of November. Yeah, that's nice. Is that just mm -hmm. And I think we can also extend it a bit. A bit. It's possible for one, two weeks. Uh, but, <clears throat> but you should be fine. Uh, any other questions? I, I have finished my presentation, so I can stop recording for now. So <clears throat> everything will be uh, published today, uh, announced today. Uh, so no worries. Stop recording. <clears throat>